Welcome to Liberty Revealed, the only show where you will learn about all things liberty. Your host for the show is a registered libertarian who's been involved in politics for more than 25 years. He has a passion for teaching others about the concept of personal liberty. Please welcome your host, Mike Mahoney. Do you miss the glory days of talk radio where the hosts knew their stuff and were not spreading fake stories? What would it be like if those same hosts could speak their mind and not have to answer to management for it? I have just the thing for you. Spencer Hughes Podcast Adventures is the new show from Spencer Hughes, formerly of Fox News Radio and a host of other places. For as little as $1 a month, you can have access to Spencer again. His insights will make you think, and his humor will make you laugh. This is your chance to help a man build his dream and support his family. Head over to patreon.com forward slash Spencer Hughes today and subscribe to one of the several levels you can choose from. You will not be disappointed in the content you are going to begin receiving. Patreon.com forward slash Spencer Hughes. Adventurous content the way radio used to be. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I would like to talk to you about an important topic in society, crime and justice. I will likely be presenting perspective that you may not agree with, but I have a strong argument to support my perspective, and I would appreciate if you would listen and then comment if you need to. One of the biggest problems facing society today is that many things should not be considered crimes, but they're labeled as crimes. Worse yet, many of these actions are punished more harshly than with than our violent crimes. This has evolved over time as society has gotten more and more irritated by where society is headed. I believe that the label of crime should be limited to actions of force or fraud against another individual or group. To me, that is what defines a crime. I believe that such crimes should be prosecuted and punished by our justice system, but that actions that don't involve force or fraud should not be criminalized or penalized in the first place. I believe all laws that create crimes without a victim should be repealed. Only actions which infringe upon the rights of others should be considered crimes. I believe in restitution where the criminal must make their victim financially whole again. Now, many areas of our country have instituted the three strikes in your outlaws that seek to be a deterrent to future criminal acts. But the problem is that these provisions are unlikely to significantly reduce crime. A relatively small proportion of all offenders commit most of the crime. Removing these career criminals from society makes sense. But the three strikes approach is illusory. Nearly Every study of criminal behavior shows that men between the ages of 16 and 35 commit most of the crime. Those leaving prison after the age of 40 have an amazingly low recidivism rate. Yet, three strikes would keep three-time losers in prison into their 60s and 70s and beyond. With prison costs running at more than $60,000 per bed, plus $23,500 per year per inmate to incarcerate an individual, there is a significant danger that the three strikes laws could lead to the early release of truly violent criminals serving their first or second sentence in order to warehouse elderly criminals who pose little or no threat to society. Here in California, we passed a two, we passed two ballot measures that have created a significant increase in crime. Props 47 and 57 were sold to the voters as positive things. In fact, one of them was called the Safe Schools Act. Now, by reclassifying crimes from felonies to misdemeanors, the state of California facilitated the early release of some 10,000 criminals. If these people committed acts that constitute fraud or involved the use of force on others, they should have remained in jail. While several provisions, like recreational use of drugs, were reduced penalties, fraud was also one that was reduced. I believe this is wrong and has definitely led to an increase in crime across the state. I believe that ending the racist war on drugs is an essential part of any plan to improve our justice system. Millions of people, most of whom are people of color, are arrested, jailed, and given a criminal record because they voluntarily choose to consume something. 
Not only is it immoral for the government to decide what is and is not acceptable for people to consume, criminalizing drugs does nothing to reduce the scourge of drug addiction and abuse. The war on drugs hurts the people we should be trying to help and diverts criminal justice resources away from prosecuting actual crimes committed against people and property. Drug abuse should be considered a health care issue, not a criminal issue. Now, I plan to cover the war on drugs in more detail in a future episode of this show, but for now, this is my position. I also believe that our current justice system has many punishments that far outweigh the crimes committed. It is my belief that punishments should be proportionate to the crime committed and should be fair and humane. Prison systems across the country are commonly reported in the news for their terrible living conditions. I believe this also must change. All people's rights matter, whether they are incarcerated or not. Our prisons need to be as safe, clean, and humane as possible. In addition, many jails around the country are violating the rights of those they imprison. Here in Orange County, there has been a scandal involving the county jail system. Apparently, the Orange County Sheriff's Office has been using, legally, jailhouse informants to get information on those who are incarcerated. This has caused a major issue in Orange County with demands for an investigation. Abuses such as this need to be curtailed. The appropriate way to suppress crime is through consistent enforcement of laws that protect individual rights. I am calling here for an end to hate crime laws that foster resentment by giving some individuals special status under the law. I applaud the trend toward private protection services and voluntary community crime control groups. Hate crime laws are being used to punish black people, and that has got to stop. Additionally, our justice system currently sets up former inmates for failure. When someone's released from prison, the goal is for them to find a steady job, stable living situation, and to avoid criminal activity. Evidence shows that overly long prison terms do very little to reduce recidivism and may actually make it more likely for someone to re-offend. Currently, recidivism rates are very high. These rates could be easily reduced by making prisons more humane so that prisoners are not physically and psychologically traumatized by the experience. Making sentences more reasonable and proportionate to the offense and welcoming offenders who have served their sentences back into society and the workforce. One thing that has always made me shake my head is that former inmates cannot hold certain professional licenses. Why does this make me shake my head? Well, it's simple. While in prison, inmates are taught certain skills that require a professional license in order to do the skill for a living. So why are we wasting time teaching these skills if they are useless once the prisoner has been released? I say we should allow former inmates to have a path to holding these professional licenses. It just makes the most sense to me. In my opinion, I want to see crimes that are truly crimes prosecuted and punished. I also want behavior that does not involve force or fraud legalized and dealt with outside the criminal justice system. I want to see justice for victims and also justice for the accused and the convicted. The rights of every person's matter, and we must not turn a blind eye on the rights of the confused or the convicted. That is my take on the crime and justice in our country. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Liberty Revealed, and I hope you'll come back the next time. Have a great one. I am a big believer in personal liberty. To me, my rights end where your rights begin. What this means is law should ensure that your freedom to live your life as you choose does not impact everyone else's freedom to live their lives as they choose. This is personal liberty. If you want to learn more about personal liberty and get more from this show, sign up to receive my 10-page guide on personal liberty entitled Liberty Revealed. You need to fill out a simple form located at yogispodcastnetwork.com forward slash liberty revealed. That's y-o-g-i-s podcastnetwork.com forward slash liberty revealed. Once you read through that ebook, you are guaranteed to be in a position to apply the philosophy of personal liberty. Thanks for listening to Liberty Revealed, the show where you learn about all things liberty. 
please visit the show's website at yogispodcastnetwork.com backslash LR, where you can reach out to Mike directly with your questions and comments. Again, that is yogispodcastnetwork.com backslash LR.